Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be giving you an introduction to the Array Buffer op. I'd just like you to pause the video and make what you see here. Great. So before I'm going to explain anything about the Array Buffer op, I just want to set up something first, which is going to hopefully make it easier to understand what this op is and what it does and why you would use it. So first of all, let's make a timer 2 op. Move that up here. And I'm going to put the speed on 0 0.5. I'm then going to plug this into a Perlin noise op. So just so you can see what's happening here, this is like a seed. Like a we're getting a value out of the Perlin noise. So if we hold the mouse over here, we can see the values that it's kind of output in. They range from minus 1 to 1. They're like nice, smooth, organic curves. So now let's plug this into a multiply op. Multiply by 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it, click here, control V, click here, control V. Let's tidy this up a little bit. So if we now plug this into position X and this into position Y and this into position Z and we make the sphere smaller, let's say 0 0.05, we now have the sphere floating around in space. As you can see, it's moving on the X, Y and the depth, the Z component. I can now change the speeds a little bit so they all are completely different from each other. And I can also plug the timers in to just really generate different unique seeds like this. Okay, so great. So now we have this sphere flying around. So this sphere is floating through space and it's following a path. So like each frame with main loop transform is getting a number from Perlin noise. So let's get back to this array buffer. Let's imagine you had a queue of five people. So the first person walks in, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And now let's just agree that this queue cannot be longer than five. So when a sixth person comes, we say to the first person, can you leave? So the sixth person enters, the first one goes. And now we still have a queue of five. The seventh person comes in, and now the second person goes. And this continues. So we can do that with the array buffer up. So we're actually going to do it to visualize the path that that sphere is following. Now, if you're not following it, don't worry. It makes perfect sense once you put this together. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to make the array buffer up. Stores values in an array. First in, first out, array buffer. Press Enter. So I'm now going to duplicate this three times. So what it expects is its maximum length and the values we want to pass in. So first of all, let's give them all a trigger. And now let's plug this into value, that's x. Let's plug this into value, that's y. Let's plug this into value, that's z. Now we need to make sure that they're all the same length. I'm going to drag that out. I'm going to type in value. And now as you can see, the value op has grabbed the attribute name and called it max length. Now let's put this say on 50. So we need a way to visualize this. So we need to pack this array. So I'm going to say array pack free. So this is the X component, Y component, Z component. Let's give it a trigger. And to visualize it, we're going to use the op simple spline. Simple spline expects an array of data to draw a line. Now, let's plug this in and see what happens. As you can see, the coordinates of the Perlin noise, which are going to the sphere, are being pushed into this buffer one after another, every single frame. And what you're then seeing is, is that the first one coming in pushes the old values out. So if we now go to max length and put this, say, for example, on 200, as you can see, we now have this path. Just give it a moment, and there we go. It keeps on erasing the oldest values as the new ones come in. So just to make it a little bit easier to visualize, we're going to click here, and we're going to add an orbit control. And as you can see, this is a 3D path through space. And I think it's a really great way to just like wrap your head around what this op is doing. So this is an introduction to the Array Buffer op. I hope this video has been educational and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching. Bye.